Good morning. It is October 18th and we are starting to finally get to the end of what has been a long, hot, dry summer. <clears throat> um, we are seeing recovery. There's been rainfall in certain parts of the state. I know the Cleveland area has had a lot more rainfall. Um, maybe further south, we're still having some issues. The one thing I've noticed is the timing of uh, seed applications may have uh, run into some issues as far as temperatures. But uh, online today, we got Dr. Tyler Carr, Dr. Xiao Wei Wu, and Dr. Dave Shetler. Dr. Carr, take it away. Thanks, Dr. Nangle. Yeah, when it comes to seeding, uh, a lot of people put out seed, you know, at the recommended times uh, in September or so, but it was just so dry that nothing germinated. And then at the end of September, we got some rain, uh, some nice effective slow rain from Hurricane Helene in most of the state. Um, and then we saw a lot of germination, but now it's been very dry. I'm starting to see some of these areas that have germinated starting to struggle a little bit. I'm starting to see some drought stress symptoms, um, uh, cause they're just not very, very developed. So if you have a situation like that, it'd be great to get some water out. Um, we don't need a ton of water right now. Um, even though we're having high temperatures coming up into the seventies, we're not hitting 70 degrees until, you know, mid afternoon. Um, it's it's been pretty cool here. Um, we've had frost in Columbus the last three or so mornings. Um, and so planting seed uh, now, unless it's perennial ryegrass um, or maybe tall fescue in the uh, central to southern parts of the state, um, you may not get a mow on it until the spring, especially with bluegrass. Uh, but if you do decide to seed now, use some type of mulch, uh, whether that's straw, a clean straw, um, a germination blanket, some type of, um, some type of compost or something, just something to help the seed retain some moisture. Uh, cause when it, when it does rain, it may be a gully washer and we want that seed to stay in place. When it, uh, so we were talking before this about, about frost and, and something that got brought up was, uh, was that it's about time for you know our final fertilizer applications of the year. Um, there's this notion of late season uh, nitrogen applications that that provide turf grass color improvements in the spring. Um, but a lot of times we're applying really high rates of nitrogen around Thanksgiving. Not much of that nitrogen is taken up by the plant um, that can be lost into, to groundwater or or runoff, um, and so I I would like to encourage our turf managers to um, put out their final fertilizer application. You know, by the end of this month, um, in the southern part of the state, if temperatures are warmer, put out some quick release applications at low rates to to improve color throughout the fall. Um, but once the ground is frozen. Uh, and, and like I said, we've had a couple of frosts here. We really don't need to be applying a ton of nitrogen. Um, the fertilizer that we apply now is going to help us uh, have improved quality in the spring. Another thing I wanted to add um, was that the Ohio Turfgrass Foundation Conference and Show registration should be open, um, if not by the end of this week, sometime early next week. Uh, there are a couple things that are new this year. Um, one of them is, and, and these are, and some of these are on, on Wednesday afternoon and Thursday. So our conference is running from December 10th through the 12th is when the education is. Um, our typical education schedule will be on Tuesday and Wednesday morning. Um, trade show will end Wednesday early afternoon and we'll have banter sessions. Uh, now, what the heck is a banter session? Um, these are going to be two hours on Wednesday from three to five. There will be beer in the room to help you unwind. Um, and there will be topics like budgeting, leadership, and the latest turf management tools. Um, so these are meant to be informal sessions led by some of your industry peers. Um, and the goal is to bring people together from different sectors so lawn care operators are in the same room as sports field managers and, and golf course superintendents. Get everyone together and talk about um, important issues. 
We're also having um, the session or two sessions, one hour each on Tuesday and Wednesday during the trade show. It's called the Turf Team on the Trade Show Floor. So this is an opportunity to hear from OSU faculty, staff, and graduate students on some of the, the most up-to-date um, information that's coming out of these programs. Uh, so be on the lookout for, for the schedule for that. On Thursday, the conference is ending at noon. Um, in the morning, we're having interactive half-day workshops. Uh, I believe we have four or five workshops scheduled. Um, you can go to ohioturfgrass.org and check out the program to, to learn about those. Um, but these are going to be pretty interactive, um, and you should leave with something tangible. Uh, there's no additional fee for these, but we uh, will have you uh, pre-register for these workshops so that we can get a good head count, make sure we have enough materials. And then lastly, Wednesday afternoon, it'd be the same time as the banter sessions from one to five um, is a seminar on wheels where you'll get a behind the scenes look of OSU athletics um, and some of their facilities. That is limited to 50 people and it's just a $25 add on to help, help offset some of those costs. Um, but be on the lookout for registration. Uh, like I said, it's going to be open soon. There will be an early bird registration fee, so register early. Um, and future turf team times, we'll talk about the program in more detail. Thanks, guys. Uh, Tyler, we we also want to mention that the uh, uh, Buckeye Environmental Horticulture team has put together a pretty substantive uh, uh, list of sessions for landscapers also. Uh, and, and so uh, for those of you that are in general landscape, uh, that includes the turf management, but also the tree shrubs uh, and flowers, we'll have sessions uh, available for those again this year too. Yes, that, that's a good point. Thanks for bringing that up. So in the past, there have been two short course tracks. Um, that is being expanded to four this year. So one short course track is uh, for landscape plants and practices. Another is for landscape pests. Um, there's a business and more track. Um, and then um, a back to basics track. So the, 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 that group has done a really good job providing programming um, for as long as I can remember. And um, expanding on that is going to allow for more opportunities and hopefully increase um, the diversity of people that we can bring in to this conference. Thank you, Dr. Carr. Dr. Wu. Good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to just follow up a bit um, um, on Dr. Carr's um, talk um, on the drought and uh, rainfall a bit. Um, so it looks like our well, the uh, drought, although it's a bit dry uh, right now, but um, about two weeks ago, um, we had a good irrigation in some areas in Ohio, and that really alleviated um, the grass uh, situation. You can look at the picture that I took from my neighborhood, um, the norm. Um, you know, after there was a drought stress in the summer, and on the right is kind of recovery. Um, there was nothing else there, just natural recovery. And um, when the girls grass do better and pests become active again. And I have received um, a few reports about white growth damage and digging. Um, some of those um, may be um, because of untreat um, untreated uh, areas. And also I've been uh, heard reports about using uh, fertilizer incorporated, um, insects are incorporated fertilizer for control of crops. And um, so I would like you to keep an eye on that. If you are using um, a compo product on including um, the um, neotenoid uh, or the um, anthracic diamide, you probably want to take a look at the active ingredient and the percentage to make sure you have good coverage um, and also good timing of applications. Um, and last time, Dr. Dave Shetta mentioned about the curative control growth options on um, Dinox and Arena. And um, both can provide good control, but Arena is um, because it's um, systemic insecticide, the neotenoid, it need to be taken um, when the growths are actually fading. Um, so um, 
the Dynox can kill uh, at any time, but both will need to be watered in with adequate amount of uh, water um, to wash the chemicals into the root system to reach the grubs. And arena stops working again when grubs stop feeding. And another thing I've noticed is uh, cream fries. In the past two to three weeks, I have uh, noticed uh, the cream fry populations in several locations uh, in Worcester and around uh, Columbus campus. And on also, um, uh, actually on the weekend, last weekend, when I went to the park with my families, my daughter came out to me and said, mom, there's a lot of um, giant mosquitoes. I said, no worries, they will not bite you. They, they are not mosquitoes, they're cream fries. They do not have the mouth part to bite you. So no, no concerns. Um, so we have a native cream fries and also some non-native cream fries. You may notice that um, the native species, they do not have the white margin um, as in the non-native species. So the native species do not generally do not cause uh, big damage. They like to feed on the um, organic matters and the thatch, uh, like those uh, dead materials um, build up from the drought stress um, is a good a fruit source for them. Um, however, non-native species like a European cream fry and marsh cream fries, um, they can feed on the the teenage and uh, crowns and shoes uh, to cause damage. So crack identification is important. Fortunately, um, recently, what, whatever I have seen so far are all native species. So there's no big concerns. However, if you are concerned about high densities, and especially um, in, if in your area, you notice um, the invasive species, there's some control options available, uh, especially the combination products with the uh, um, um, Pyrethroids targeting the adult stage and also negative noise targeting the novel stage will be good options. Neck noft, uh, anectas, triple crowns, um, those can be applied. Um, that's what I have. And also I want to make an announcement that um, for the NEMTO survey program, um, thank you for the participation in the program. For those who send us samples, um, we have shared some results out about two weeks ago. Um, and also this week we have um, more results to send out. And sorry, this has taken so long and thank you for your patience for the results. One of our expert doing the identification of the nematodes were out of the was out of the country for quite a long period of time. And we're a bit short in neighbor. So next year we may do this again and we will get better prepared. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wu. Can you stop sharing the screen? There we go. Uh, one follow-up question for Dr. Carr. Uh, obviously in academia, we are not in the business of making money, but uh, for that fertilizer application or fall fertilizer application, do you think if people are adamant that they're going to make an application that iron might be a good alternative application? Uh, if there's if, if they're to apply iron, I think a liquid iron application would be impactful. Um, you know, there's there's research out there showing that the many granular iron applications don't get taken up by the plant, uh, even in chelated forms. And if, if they do, um, the effect is not as drastic as it would be as in a liquid application. Oh. Um, and if they are applying nitrogen late in the year, just put the, just dial the rate down. Um, we don't need to be applying a pound to a pound and a half of nitrogen per 1000 square feet right now. That's uh, um, not super effective or environmentally conscious, um, but li liquid iron applications, I think, could be beneficial. What are your thoughts on that? Dr. Shetler. Uh I guess the uh, uh, Xiaohui has covered the, the insect things. Uh, we always get questions also with the people that, that were getting some of the, the skunk and raccoon activity later in the year. Uh, will those grubs uh, be present next spring? Uh, it's been our experience that uh, there's a fair amount of uh, grub death during the winter time. Uh, and with the turf grass more actively growing in the springtime, we rarely experience any real damage from the grubs uh, in the springtime. 
though we will get some skunk and raccoon digging. But I also want to point out that the skunks and raccoons could be going after uh, the earthworms. Uh, if, if you've got a good earthworm population, uh, they will feed on those little tasty morsels at nighttime also. Uh, and, and so uh, I always caution people that if they think they've, they've got grub damage in the springtime, uh, see if you can pull that turf back and find the grubs uh, before you do any uh, panic uh, applications. The last thing, uh, I, I don't think we've discussed it all that much, but uh, there's a lot of lawns that I'm seeing that are going into this winter pretty severely damaged. Uh, and uh, as, as Tyler has mentioned, uh, uh, that it's, it's probably too late uh, to really get any good effective seeding done at this time. Uh, but you might want to consider, especially if you've got customers that really want something done, uh, to consider some sodding. Uh, and and uh, doing sodding next spring uh, is a very effective way of getting a really good stand covered uh, and not dealing with the, the weed problem that you might have with a spring seeding. Uh, and, and so uh, maybe put that into your playbook. Uh, this winter time, uh, you can price out the sod this winter time and and be ready next spring uh, to do uh, some effective sodding that will cover those areas that that just aren't being covered uh, this fall and winter. That's all I've got. Thank you, Dr. Shetler. Of course, uh, I was about to mention the sod, but the other thing, only you, Dr. Shetler, would call earthworms tasty morsels. <laughs> You are unbelievable, sir. <laughs> All right, folks, we'll leave it at that. Uh, I do expect that we're going to see a little bit more of a continuation of maybe not hot weather, but somewhat warm weather. So maybe that will help uh, some of that seed get over the bump. But day lengths may be something that are a concern going forward now. Um, however... All of the plans uh, may need to be pushed towards uh, springtime. As you can see, if you've got questions, email us at bugeyeturf at osu.edu, uh, our social media pages, OSU Turf, OSU ATI Turf, and then uh, Turf Team Times is on Spotify and podcast. The website has a range of fact sheets and latest information, along with uh, Dr. Carr's newsletter, if you missed the most recent one. Um, there are also updates in there as well. Um, thank you, folks, and we'll see you all in probably about two to three weeks.